Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Anna and Orange, where I build a lot of 3D metal models. And welcome to the review for the P51D Sweet Arlene Mustang plane that we have right here. Just recently built this model. There's a part one and part two of the build video up if you want to check those out on how to do it. And now it's time to review this build. It is a nice looking airplane model. Metal Earth has done a number of aircraft models over the years. I built a lot of them, not quite all of them. A lot of the older ones and they keep coming out with more. This one is in color. Metal Earth has very much gone towards a line of color models. They've kind of gotten away from the, the silver models and I like the direction that they're going with most of the stuff they're doing. This model doesn't have any of that silvery finish on it at all. It has very much a gray finish, which is very similar. I've said it before, it's very similar to the Star Wars models that have come out. They have kind of a uh, dull or semi-gloss kind of gray to it. That's what this has. It has a gray, but it also has the red bits and also has other detailing on it as well. As a matter of fact, we have the Sweet Arlene right here painted on it. I don't know really any of the history of the Sweet Arlene, what exactly that comes from. There's a little blip on the packaging on their website that basically says, the American long range single seat fighter and fighter bomber used during World War II and the Korean War. The P-51D model was flown by Lieutenant Bowers of the 4th Fighter Group 334th Squadron. It was named Sweet Arlene and was credited with six enemy aircraft destroyed. If you Google P-51 Sweet Arlene, there's a number of pictures that come up and a lot of just the same basic detail. Don't know the history of it, but I know this is a nice looking model and it is not that difficult to build. Total time for me to build it was a little over two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. They also give you the option of building it with landing gears or without landing gears. I did it with the landing gears, as you can see. Again, it took me two hours and 15 minutes. The first half of it came together really quickly. I thought, this isn't even going to take two hours. But then once you get halfway through, the first half is all large pieces. The body, the large wings, the top of the wings. Things come together pretty quickly. But then once you get about halfway through, you start working on the bottom. And that's where some of the smaller parts and detail come in. There's actually a lot of detail on the bottom. And I like that to this stand actually fairly easily removable. It kind of wedges in there, which is interesting. But the bottom has a nice amount of detail. I like that the bottom piece isn't one long piece you have to kind of fight with. There's actually three separate sections, not counting the bottom wing piece. So the bottom wing piece is one section. There's a front piece, kind of a mid piece, and then a little bit of a tail piece that you have to construct. So slightly different design not very much still a very basic design of the aircraft and it comes together fairly well not a lot of fiddly bits to it though it is a lot of just trying to shape the curved and angular parts of say the fuselage and whatnot i don't feel like making the plane fuselage is one of my strong suits Building the airplanes is a lot of what inspired me to come up with 3D printed tools that I have, the cone shaping tools, and I've been working on a tapered set for quite a while now. I originally came out with the idea because of the bodies of the planes and because of things like Iron Man and C-3PO that have kind of tapered arm and leg pieces. Though I've built a lot of those models, so I don't have a lot of use for it. I haven't been able to test those tools out much. I've got some questions about it when they show up in the video. When it showed up for this video, it was helpful in doing some of the curved bodies because the body isn't just straight bent over it's actually a slight taper to the front and back and helped having a round a tool that was tapered and round as well but that is probably the difficult part of this model is trying to get those shapes right doing this cockpit area it's a lot of you know odd curves you can't just fold around one stick and there you go there's some odd curves to it some tapered parts to it the tape the cover of the cockpit came out pretty good. The front is a little off and didn't sit as flush as I like, but this piece right here surprised me at how well that ended up being. And then you have to put little bits of curves in the wings. They're slightly bowed out though. I don't think I quite have got them quite as bowed as I should have. This has got a slight curve to it. So there's a lot of just minor curving and shaping to get the plane all together. The tabs are going to bring it together to some degree, but there's a, a fair amount of relying on 
the individual yourself, the builder, getting those curves right. The, I'm guessing these are the bombs because it says it is also a bomber. Being that they're cone shaped on front and back with a closed up middle and all one piece, cone shaping tools that I have were minimally useful on those. It was mostly I had to do it by hand because both ends were closed. You really couldn't fit a long tool in there to shape the part. But still, I think I did actually better doing one by hand, which I think was this side, than the one that I used more of the cone shaping tools. This one I did almost completely by hand. I think it turned out a little bit better. So, yeah. But all in all, there's a little bit of a challenge in getting the shapes right. It's not a very challenging and difficult build. Furthermore, if you want to build it without the landing gears down, it becomes even simpler. Now, as of the making of this video, there's still no online instructions, basic instructions for this model. There's still no 360 view. I have sent an email to Fascinations to just see what's going on there. Maybe it's something that got overlooked. However, on the paper instructions that came with my kit, there was a notation that if you wanted to build this without the landing gear, it gives a website to go to for some online instructions, and those online instructions are there. I compared those instructions with the regular instructions. They're the same instructions. The difference being is once you get a little over halfway down, I believe it's page 4, and you clip out 25, which is this long lower wing piece, and you skip parts 26 all the way to 35. 26 to 35 are the pieces of the landing gear and little detail pieces that go on the inside. You can see there's a discolored piece on the opening. All those pieces, you just skip them. And these two pieces, there's a little flap here on the side of the landing gear and a flap on this side. You just don't fold them down. You leave them up. You leave them as they are. You jump all the way down to 36, which would be these two bomb pieces. Shape those, you add those on, and you basically put the wing on the bottom and continue on. So without that, which is some of the detailed portions, Without that, I probably could have done this in less than two hours, hours, maybe two hours and 45 minutes, just a guess. So if you decide to omit the landing gears, it's not as long as a build because you're just skipping a bunch of little pieces and adding stuff onto that bottom wing. And then when you get to this back piece, you also skip 37, 38, and 39 and don't put that gear on as well. There's just a flat piece, part 40 clip that out, shape it, and add it on to the bottom. So basically subtract all the wheels and inside components and just leave those flaps closed. And everything else, all of this is the same. The front part, the rest of it is all the same. So it definitely save you a little bit of time, make for a cleaner look. Maybe one of these days I'll buy this model a second time and do it without the landing gears for that neater look. That would be kind of interesting. I might have to do that. As far as difficulties that I ran into with this model, not a lot of them. When you're doing the inside components, the cockpit area, there is kind of a front display piece that you're putting together. and all sits on one large piece that kind of has a couple of angles. And then what looks like in the instructions, straight parallel sides. That is uh, part 13. Part 13 in the instructions look like it's supposed to be flat sides, but I never could get to that point. I tried different angles on the top piece to try and see if I couldn't get the sides to be flat, but they tended to kind of toe in or toe out a little bit. I was still able to get the single tabs in line and get it connected, but it, it's something I work with and it's, maybe the instructions just aren't correct. I want to say that even in a picture somewhere it looks like it, but once it's buried inside of here you can't really tell. So don't fight with it too much trying to get those sides straight like the instructions. Just get the tabs lined up and get the other parts on it and keep going on. It's interesting, it's not problematic, but interesting that like these rear stabilizers are actually two pieces that kind of come together right here in the middle on this, I believe it's the vertical stabilizer, and then that just sits on the back. Interesting change, usually it's a wing over here that attaches and then that, that one over there attaches and they're a little bit floppy, but the way this is, it's actually half of it folded out, the other half folded out and I want to say the bottom of these horizontal stabilizers fold over and, and secure and then the whole thing just kind of they connect together and it sits on top interesting change in that also something something similar with this rear wheel if you do the landing gears the tire portion half of it's on one side and half of it's on the other that you have to partially shape and fold together a little bit weird but it can work and like i've already mentioned doing these pieces right here. It's nice to be able to use some sort of cone shaped tool to get those cones quite right but it's really 
not going to work because of the way this is designed. You're going to have to do most of it with some other tool to kind of close it up. There's cones on either side and it limits what you can use in there. Still quite doable though. Can't, can't really say that anything else was problematic about it. Any of the ones that I've mentioned weren't really that problematic. I do like that the propellers are actually kind of double-sided and you fold one side over the other so you have colors on both sides and the way they're connected to the center is a thin bit so it makes it really easy to twist them so they have that more real, realistic propeller look which I, I did at the very end. One tip that I, I guess I kind of skimmed over one of the things that I did when curving this back piece, there's two tabs to hold it down, it kind of curves over and holds down to the side. I twisted those lightly initially, well not even lightly, I twisted them decently initially because I wanted it to be secure in case I had to flex and reshape the part, which I did a little bit. And then when it was done, I untwisted and kind of folded them up. Because if they're just folded like the instructions say, they easily pull out. I've had that with other planes. If you're confident that you've got the shape right the first time, fold them over and be done with it. But I know me and things get stressed and they'll pop out. Did have a little bit of trouble with this back piece. It's not quite curved the way it looks so that it looks great. I did the best I could and it's, it's okay. It's one of the challenges with these models. A lot of these little detailed curved and angular and odd shaped pieces. It's easy to accidentally go wrong with them. Well, you do the best you can and hope it turns out okay. I'm always going to find flaws with my own work. I think a lot of other people do the same thing. It's not perfect, but done a decent job, I think. The stand is pretty similar to a lot of other stands. There's two side pieces, a back piece that come together and sit on top of the stand with a fairly familiar trim piece underneath. The side pieces are folded in. The trick that I did was this back piece fold those angles at about or fold the tabs at about 45 degrees to kind of hook each piece on and then hold it together with one hand while it while I line it up at the base twist those tabs and then go back and better secure fold these tabs over side tabs over 90 degrees and then add on the bottom part not a big deal and honestly this thing if you put these wheels on secure enough which unfortunately they're a little bit wobbly it can actually just sit like that without the stand and I ended up taking a picture with that like that without even thinking about it it's like later I'm like oh I forgot to put that on the stand but it looks good so I'm just gonna go with that I believe that's the thumbnail picture actually I've been working on so many complex models here lately I feel like there's more I should say but there's really not a lot to it this is a colorful but somewhat basic not, not terribly basic I've got some airplane models behind me like the F4, F4U Corsair and some of the older models that were even more basic and even less detail that they detail on them they relied more on engraving but now we have little flaps and bits and stuff that just add extra detail to it without just relying on engraving and this takes advantage of some of that but still a lot of it is color painting and engraving there's just not a lot to an aircraft model they're not going to have a lot of details on the body and wing because you want it to be aerodynamic so Really good job, nice looking model, certainly an excellent addition to the collection of airplanes that Metal Earth already has. There goes that landing gear tilting to the side. You can build it with or without landing gears. Honestly, with landing gears, you could leave the stand off and just put it up like that. It's a nice looking model, nice looking detail. It's just not really anything negative to say about it. It was kind of relaxing a little bit to go from building a six and a half hour Sith TIE Fighter and a several hour Duesenberg and several hour this and several hour that to a two and a half hour, two and a quarter hour fairly simple airplane model. I'll leave it at that as always. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. This was a requested model. It took me a while to get to it. I do take requests, though it, it can take me a while to get to them depending on how many things are on the table. I, there's a, a, usually a Thing in the description down below a link to a table of current requests that I have and where I'm standing on them if you want to check that out for yourself I'm always working towards them but then I've always got a lot of models to build a lot of things going on thank you for watching and as always keep on keeping on